Breaking news from Starbase, Texas. The massive Starship vehicle you see behind me is being de-stacked right now after yesterday's launch attempt was scrubbed. SpaceX has officially confirmed they're targeting a new launch window for tomorrow, Wednesday, at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. What happened? SpaceX engineers have identified a critical issue with the ground support equipment, specifically a significant leak in the pneumatic system used to spin up the turbines before engine ignition. Elon Musk reported they were running about 20 bar, 300 PSI, too low, which simply wasn't enough pressure to properly start the engines. The good news? The team worked through the night and believes they've isolated the problem. This D-stack operation you're witnessing serves two crucial purposes. It's excellent training for the ground crew and provides much better access to the quick disconnect points on both the ship and booster where everything needs to be checked and reconnected. And tomorrow's forecast looks absolutely perfect. Clear blue skies, temperatures around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and significantly calmer winds than today. Mother Nature seems to be cooperating for our third ever booster catch attempt. One of the most impressive aspects of the Starship program is their rapid turnaround capability. When yesterday's countdown hit that T minus 40 second hold point, the team immediately shifted to troubleshooting mode. The moment they decided to scrub, they initiated this D-stack procedure you're seeing now, showcasing the operational flexibility built into the Starship design philosophy. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 hours, let's dive right in. Beyond the stunning visuals of this massive rocket being de-stacked, what we're witnessing is a testament to SpaceX's innovative approach to spaceflight. Their ability to pivot so quickly after yesterday's scrub demonstrates why they're revolutionizing access to space. Standing here with Joe at Boca Chica Beach, we're practically alone on these mud flats. It's surprisingly empty today, likely because it's midweek and this launch date has shifted multiple times. But that's the reality of spaceflight. Delays and scrubs are part of the process. What matters is how SpaceX responds to these challenges. The issue that prevented yesterday's launch was identified quickly. That pneumatic system leak meant they were running about 20 bar below the necessary pressure, approximately 300 PSI too low. Without sufficient pressure, they couldn't properly spin up the turbines before ignition. It's a technical hurdle, but one the SpaceX team worked through overnight. They decided to go ahead with the D-Stack anyway, Joe points out. It's excellent training and gives them the perfect opportunity to check everything thoroughly. What's fascinating about this D-Stack operation is how it gives us a rare glimpse into SpaceX's operational flexibility. With the ship now much closer to the ground, technicians can easily access the critical, quick disconnect points on both the ship and booster. These connections are essential for the propellant transfer systems and must be perfect for tomorrow's launch attempt. While yesterday's weather was brutally foggy, we would have barely seen the rocket ascend. Tomorrow promises to be spectacular for viewing. Clear blue skies, temperatures hovering around 70 degrees, and significantly calmer winds. Joe tells me this is practically paradise for Boca Chica. The launch conditions look optimal, with favorable ground and aloft wind conditions. Mother Nature seems to be giving Flight 8 her blessing, one notable change since our last visit is the significantly reinforced keep-out barriers. SpaceX has replaced the previous flimsy stakes and flags with substantial barriers that extend far down the beach. The message is unmistakable. They're serious about maintaining safety perimeters. These new barriers are much more substantial, Joe explains. The previous markers never survived a launch. We'll see how these hold up tomorrow. Despite the clarity of these new barriers, Joe mentions he's still seen people climbing over them. This creates a serious safety concern and potentially threatens future public access. If spectators don't respect these boundaries, we all stand to lose our viewing privileges. SpaceX has been remarkably accommodating to the public, allowing closer access than many aerospace facilities, but that goodwill depends on everyone following the rules. Looking beyond tomorrow's launch, SpaceX recently released exciting updates about their Florida operations. I'll be heading there myself on March 11th to cover not only the Crew-10 launch, but also to investigate SpaceX's ambitious Starship plans for the Kennedy Space Center. It's going to open up opportunities for even more people to see Starship launches, Joe explains. They're planning to have two launch towers there, similar to what we have here in Texas. Perhaps most intriguing is their timeline, 
SpaceX is targeting Starship launches from Florida later this year. That's an aggressive schedule, even by SpaceX standards, but they've consistently pushed boundaries in aerospace development. One question many have asked is how SpaceX will handle the logistics of vehicles built here in Texas, but launching from Florida. The company has now confirmed they'll barge the ships and boosters across the Gulf of Mexico until Florida production facilities are operational. That will be a sight to see, Joe says, imagining the massive Starship components making the maritime journey. That would make for an incredible video following that journey across the Gulf. Beyond the immediate launch preparations and future Florida plans, there's constant evolution here at Starbase. Construction is beginning on a roundabout at the end of Highway 4 near the public beach. While this might cause short-term disruption to beach access, the long-term benefits for traffic flow will be significant. In the next week or two, we'll see construction starting, Joe predicts. It's going to be noisy and disruptive initially, but once completed, it will make a huge difference for both public traffic and the tanker trucks delivering liquid oxygen and nitrogen to the facility. The engineering marvel behind me isn't just about the rocket itself, but the entire launch system. If you focus on the second tower, Launch Pad B, you'll notice substantial progress toward making it operational. The new orbital launch mount, featuring a completely different design, is undergoing final assembly at the Sanchez site. See that A-frame structure? Joe points out. That's where the quick disconnect will be positioned. The new launch mount will be approximately as thick as that A-frame, making it much higher than the current one. This redesigned launch mount represents SpaceX's iterative engineering approach. Based on lessons learned from previous launches, they've created a more robust system that will be both more survivable and more rapidly reusable. To truly appreciate the scale of what we're witnessing, it helps to see humans working around these massive structures. The Starship and Super Heavy combination stands nearly 400 feet tall when stacked, taller than the Statue of Liberty on its pedestal. Even de-stacked as it is now, the scale is difficult to comprehend through a camera lens. What makes tomorrow's launch attempt particularly significant is that SpaceX will be going for their third ever booster catch. The massive chopstick arms of the launch tower are designed to catch the returning Super Heavy booster a feat of precision that seemed impossible just a few years ago. Unlike the last flight test, SpaceX hopes to control the ship's re-entry more precisely. Previous test flights have provided valuable data on how the vehicle performs during the challenging re-entry phase. Each launch builds on lessons from previous attempts, refining both the hardware and software that control these massive vehicles. The rapid turnaround we're witnessing potentially launching again just two days after a scrub, showcases the operational capabilities SpaceX has developed. Traditional rocket programs might require weeks or months between launch attempts. SpaceX is compressing that timeline dramatically, moving toward their goal of aircraft-like operations for Starship. This operational tempo represents what Elon Musk has consistently emphasized about Starship. It's designed for rapid reusability, Unlike previous rocket programs where vehicles were essentially single-use or required extensive refurbishment, Starship aims to refuel and fly again quickly. The engineering challenges to achieve this vision are immense. Every system must work flawlessly, from the Raptor engines powering both stages to the thermal protection system protecting Starship during re-entry to the catching mechanism for the booster. Each test flight provides critical data to refine these systems. What we're witnessing isn't just another rocket test. It's the iterative development of the most powerful launch system ever built. And SpaceX is doing this development in full public view, allowing enthusiasts and the curious alike to watch the process unfold. The company's approach stands in stark contrast to traditional aerospace development, which typically happens behind closed doors until systems are nearly complete. SpaceX's willingness to test, fail, learn and improve in public view represents a fundamental shift in how space technology is developed. As we await tomorrow's launch attempt, the activity at Starbase continues around the clock. Engineers and technicians are working tirelessly to ensure all systems are ready. The pneumatic system leak that caused yesterday's scrub has likely been addressed and comprehensive checks are underway. For those planning to watch tomorrow's attempt, the 5.30 p.m. Central Time target means we should have excellent lighting conditions for viewing. 
The launch window extends 60 minutes, giving SpaceX some flexibility if minor issues need to be resolved before liftoff. The Starship program represents humanity's most ambitious effort to become a multi-planetary species. These test flights are building the foundation for eventual missions to the Moon and Mars. NASA has selected a variant of Starship as the lunar lander for the Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the lunar surface. Beyond NASA's lunar plans, Elon Musk has consistently emphasized Mars as the ultimate destination. Starship is designed with Mars missions in mind, from its large payload capacity to its ability to be refueled in orbit. Each test flight brings that vision closer to reality. For space enthusiasts, tomorrow's launch attempt represents another opportunity to witness aerospace history in the making. Whether the flight is completely successful or encounters challenges, each test provides valuable data that advances the program. The Starship development program moves at a pace unprecedented in aerospace. While traditional rocket development might take a decade or more, SpaceX has compressed this timeline dramatically. This rapid development cycle is a fundamental part of their philosophy. Test early, test often, learn from failures, and iterate quickly. As we stand here watching the final preparations for tomorrow's launch attempt, the sense of witnessing history is palpable. Few human endeavors match the scale, complexity, and ambition of what SpaceX is attempting with Starship. And for those who can't be here in person, SpaceX will provide a live stream of the launch attempt. The company's transparency in sharing these moments, successful or challenging, has created unprecedented public engagement with space development. For now, all eyes are on tomorrow's launch window. Will we see a successful flight test with a booster catch and controlled ship re-entry? The aerospace world watches with anticipation. As the sun sets over Starbase, we're left with a profound appreciation for what's unfolding here in South Texas. Tomorrow's launch attempt isn't just another test. It's the next step in humanity's greatest adventure. The rapid troubleshooting, the overnight work to fix the pneumatic system, and this efficient D-Stack operation all highlight SpaceX's revolutionary approach to spaceflight. Whether you're a longtime space enthusiast or just discovering the Starship program, we're witnessing history in real time. This is rocket development happening before our eyes, transparent, iterative, and pushing boundaries with every test. We'll be back tomorrow with comprehensive coverage of the Flight 8 launch attempt. Will we see that third ever booster catch? Will the ship's re-entry be more controlled than last time? The answers await us tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. If you found this update valuable, please support our continued coverage by hitting the like button and sharing this video with fellow space enthusiasts. Drop a comment below with your predictions for tomorrow's launch. I read every comment and love discussing these developments with you all. For daily updates on everything happening with SpaceX, Starship, and all of Elon Musk's ventures, subscribe to Elon Musk 24 hours and hit that notification bell. Together, we're following humanity's journey to becoming a multi-planetary civilization, one test flight at a time. Until tomorrow's launch, this is Elon Musk 24 hours, where the future happens first.